An insolvency crisis is imminent that threatens to collapse the entire global banking system. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And over the weekend, you probably heard that several nations were lining up to sanction Russian banks. But what they didn't tell you is that these sanctions could trigger the next Lehman Brothers moment that could collapse the entire global banking system. Let's pick this story up where we start this weekend with Bloomberg, who headlines that the West cuts some Russian banks from their swift sanctions and central bank. As banks are already facing, sanctions will be hit and others may follow. This is something they did to countries like Iran. A decision to penalize Russia's central bank and exclude some Russian banks from the SWIFT messaging system used for trillions of dollars worth of transactions around the world was announced Saturday in a joint statement by the U.S., European Commission, France, Germany, Italy, U.K., and Canada. The agreement includes measures to prevent the Russian central bank from deploying its international reserves to undermine sanctions. Now, what's important to understand is what the SWIFT system is, and it is indeed a messaging system. And let me give you an example so you understand how this works. So let's say that you and I were going to meet up at some point in the future, and I sent you a text message with instructions of where to meet me and what time. Now, how does that message get to you? Well, it routes through the cellular network on my end, probably through my provider's network, potentially to your provider's network, and then on the cellular network on your end to get to your phone. And on that message is instructions of where we're gonna meet and what time. Now, how you get there is up to you. Maybe you walk, ride your bike, take a car, it doesn't matter. It's in a messaging system that lets banks transmit funds between each other to help give them the instructions they need. It doesn't actually move the money, it just provides the instructions on where the money needs to go and win. So it's important to understand what's going on here. The move is aimed at Russian banks that have already been sanctioned by the international community, but can be expanded to other Russian financial institutions if necessary, officials said. One official said the White House is looking at exemptions for transactions involving the energy sector, which the U.S. administration has sought to exclude to prevent oil prices from surging. And this is indeed happening where countries are making, putting these sanctions out, but the messages can go through if it's related to energy transfers because, well, ISIS are high right now, and further inflation would be a real problem for many consumers around the world. Let's continue on. Because more penalties against the central bank could come this weekend, according to the U.S. officials, Russia has about $640 billion in reserves. I understand that these are foreign currency reserves. A lot of people are suggesting that Russia has a lot of U.S. treasuries, and they don't. They sold most of them in 2018, as you can see here, and are down to somewhere perhaps near zero or to $5 billion worth of treasuries. And as you kind of see by that chart, they were planning ahead for some sort of event like this. And they're sitting on a massive amount of foreign currency reserves to the tune of about $500 billion. And I wouldn't want to keep my money in a bank that can't access the SWIFT system, says Bill Ackman. Once a bank can't transfer or receive funds from other banks, its solvency can be at risk. And if I were a Russian, he says, I would take my money out now. Bank runs could begin in Russia on Monday. And so this is really important to understand and how this can lead to a massive insolvency event. So let's say a bank is completely cut off from the system. Well, incoming payments, money coming in to perhaps service existing loans, well, they can't come through. And customers who are trying to send money out to make payments on things, to perhaps purchase goods or make payments on loans, they can't go out either. And so what happens then is customers realizing the bank is in danger, start pulling their money out. And we know in a fractional reserve banking system, banks do not have enough money to, con to keep themselves solvent against all of the deposits they have. So as money starts flowing out, the bank collapse, and then next thing you know, a tidal wave of insolvency events rockets through the global financial system. And that's the risk the bill is pointing out here. Let's keep going on because we're now gonna look at the Credit Suisse report from Zoltan Pozar over the weekend, which is very unusual. He almost never publishes this global dispatch, money dispatch over the weekend. And he says exclusions from SWIFT will lead to missed payments and giant overdrafts suggesting that we could see another insolvency event like Lehman Brothers and similar to the missed payments and giant overdrafts that we saw in March 2020. He goes on to say that war has led to exclusions from SWIFT that will lead to missed payments again, but by design and not without a risk of retaliation, if a freeze in activity can lead to missed payments, an inability to receive payments through SWIFT can freeze the flow of goods, services, and commodities like gas, neon, and kind. So you think of it from a trade perspective, 
If I'm conducting trade with you and you have something that I've ordered and I need to pay you, but I can't because my bank is frozen from the system, well, now we have an even bigger problem putting in pressure on inflation going up and the supply chain. And you can see that the ramifications for this get real big, real fast. Let's keep going to see what Zoltan continues to say here. The Hearst at risk, the settlement risk, owes its name to a mishap at a single bank. The risk in the current scenario involves an entire country's banking system. Banks' inability to make payments due to their exclusion from SWIFT is the same as layman's inability to make payments due to its clearing bank's unwillingness to send payments on its behalf. History does not repeat itself, but it rhymes. The consequence of excluding banks from SWIFT is real, and so is the need for central banks to reactivate daily U.S. dollar funds supplying operations. And so far, we have not seen anything from the Fed to say that they're stepping in yet, but anything could happen at any moment because these sanctions are real. Now, if you're concerned about about how your portfolio might handle itself in a major banking crisis? Well, you shouldn't be. Be sure to check out Portfolio Shield. There's a link in the corner in the description below. You'd be glad you did. Let's continue on so you can understand more how this story plays out because banks that are stuck with Russia face their biggest test of nerve. And this headline from Bloomberg, as Italian and Austrian firms have increased Russian loans since 2015, and France has a big presence too. SockGen, Unicredit, and RAF Season are in the spotlight. And now you see part of the problem is that other banks have business with Russian banks. And if they're cut off from doing business with them, well, guess what's going to happen to their loans? Well, now all of a sudden they don't have payments coming in and those loans, they go into the insol they start to become insolvent and then eventually they go into a default status. And what does this mean for a bank? And if you're a bank, what do you do when you have a loan that goes delinquent and then into default? What do you have to do? You have to reserve against it. So that means you have to take existing assets you have and put it to back that loan that's going into default. And that means that money that you should be using to lend out, you're now using as to reserve against that loan is default status. And so this is a problem because all of a sudden you start to see it frees up bank. It freezes up banks from doing what banks need to do, which is lend. And we'll look at the slide here in a moment again. And you're, first you're gonna wonder is, how much risk does my bank have? Well, the primary risk is with European banks. We see French banks, Italian, Austrian, German, Dutch, and UK to the tune of nearly $80 billion at risk that could go completely default. And at least two Wall Street banks have poured cold water on the idea that they see seek a workaround to any Russia bar, according to people familiar with the firms who prefer to remain anonymous. Most large U.S. lenders only have a small exposure to Russia now, so the direct effect, keywords direct effect, of sanctions would be limited. But of course, what we don't know is how much money those U.S. banks have lent to other banks, and so you start to see a domino effect that begins very small and then can explode overnight. Let's continue on because of greater concern will be the broader impact of the crisis on financial markets and any harm to trading. Investment banks are worried about the effect of sanctions on futures linked to Russian oil and gas or credit default swaps Now you on Russian debt. Now, you may remember credit default swaps from the great financial crisis, and that's insurance on debt defaulting. And what happened then is banks set the probability of default on mortgages to very minuscule levels. And so they sold a whole bunch of insurance on it under the belief that they would never have to pay. Now, all of a sudden, if these loans go into default, guess what happens? The insurance policies trigger. And again, you start to see how any one mechanism could trigger an insolvency crisis because if the banks who sold all this debt don't have the money to back it, well, or, or all the insurance to back the debt, well, now, are the money to back the insurance? Well, you can see that they're in trouble too. Let's continue on. As according to, of course, this will uh, counsel at a law firm of Sherman and Sterling, several senior bankers say there's fear too about retaliatory cyber attacks on U.S. financial firms by Kremlin linked hackers. And of course, the bond world sees Ukraine paying 300 million coupon even as war rages. According to Bloomberg, it faces interest payments on bonds issued in 2015 on Tuesday. So here they are in the middle of war. And of course, what are everyone hoping is they'll pay is that people will actually make payments on their debt. And we don't know if they will or they won't. 
but you see the system is desperate and how much it factors needing payments to be made on debt on a regular basis or things can unwind quickly. I think they have the cash to pay. So Tim Ash, the senior emerging market sovereign strategist, Blue Bay Asset Management, the West will be very willing to make sure they pay and Ukraine could get technical assistance. Going to default at the time of invasion would not be great. Of course, he says Blue Bay has some exposure to Ukraine, but went into the crisis underweight Russian and Ukrainian assets. And what you start to find out is people have exposure to this that you just don't know about, and they don't want you to know about it. But if it starts to come unwound, well, a lot of problems are going to happen very quickly. And this headline from Zero Hedge really puts it all into perspective as European emerging market funds gated as Russian default risk soars to record highs. As we previously noted, the last time we saw this kind of volatility was in the ruble and Russian assets. Long-term capital management, a hedge fund, was collapsing, and that hedge fund by itself nearly took down the global financial system. If you've never heard of long-term capital management, there's books written about it. Go find one. It will shock you how one hedge fund almost took down the global financial system. And as numerous Charlie McElliott warned this morning, something somewhere within the global banking ecosystem will most likely inevitably break off the back of the Russian SWIFT exclusion and frozen bank of Russia assets, potentially in the form of transactions relating to the sprawling Russian commodities trade, perhaps with the European subsidy of a Russian bank being unable to pay liabilities as these knock on throughout the system. And there is severe risk of what could happen here. And now that you understand that we could be on the edge of a major global financial system fall, uh, insolvency event, and all because of sanctions on the bank and how tightly the global economy is tied together. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now. The content of this video is prized educational information only. It's not intended for investment or advice. This material is not to be construed as a recognition or solicitation by our signing security, financial instrument, or participate in any particular training strategy. This video was paired by Steve Van Meter. Personal capacity, business expressed this video that do not affect the view of Atlas from advising or Steve Van Meter Financial.